Welcome to Slab is Easy. My name is Egosa Kesta Ibinige. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about legal structure that you can choose to register your startup business with in Nigeria. Legal structure that you can choose to register your startup business with in Nigeria. Um, as you already know, business registration is a compulsory act for any legal business to operate within the Nigeria scope. And not just in Nigeria, even outside Nigeria, you must register your business before it can be called a legal um, business. And um, registering your business, there is no way you can register your business without actually choosing a business structure. So they both intertwine and you can't separate them. So in order for you to be on the safer side, it means you need to know which legal structure um, that you're going to be operating with, which your which definitely is going to be influenced by your goal or vision for your business. And there are several types of business legal structure that you can choose from if you are going to be registering your business in Nigeria. Number one is a sole proprietorship. Sole proprietorship, also known as a one-man business, is a business that has no separate entity from its owners. It means in a situation whereby there are crises in terms of debts that your business is owing, the sole proprietorship, which is the ownership of you who is operating a sole proprietorship, we have to use your personal asset to cover those debts. Um, so proprietorship comes with these pros and cons. Um, so it all depends on how you want to choose. So for the pros of so proprietorship is that it is easy and inexpensive. It means very, very cheap to use. You have, you have full control of the business and it comes with a minimal regulatory requirement to operate a so proprietorship. In Nigeria. It also has its own cons, which is unlimited personal liability, means that you will be the one using your own personal funds in a situation whereby your business is running on bankruptcy or as debt like you can't afford to pay or rather doesn't have the capacity to pay, you have to use your personal assets to settle those bees. Um, we also have difficulty in raising capital because it's a sole proprietorship. It will be difficult for you to seek out funds from investors. So your only source of um, funding would be from family and friends, your personal finance, and probably maybe bank loans. That's if they if they see your business qualify for such um, capital that you are demanding. For. Number two is partnership. Partnership is when two or more persons come together to share responsibility and liability um, within a business. Um, for partnership, there are two types of partnership. We have a general partnership whereby there is equal sharing of responsibility and liability among partners. And we also have limited partners which comes with both, which is a combination of both general partners and limited partners. The general partners definitely have said it already, they share um, responsibilities and they share um, liability together. Why for the limited partners, um, those guys don't really share responsibility and liability together with the general partners. They only share um, responsibility and liability in accordance to their investment. It means that in the situation whereby there are losses in the, in the business and they need to pay off debts and all that, the investors who is already running on the limited partners or rather the limited partners, they don't lose their personal assets. Rather, they lose only the investment in the business. And in the case of sharing of profit, they also only get profits according to the amount um, they partner with or whatever share or whatever format they use to partner with the business. So they are only, that's why they call them limited. And because it's a limited partners, it means it's a combination of both general partners and limited partners to form the type of what we call limited partners. I hope I'm, I'm not confusing you. What I mean is that there are two types of partnership. General partnership, the shared liability and responsibility together. Limited partners is a combination of the general partners and limited partners. The general partners, you already know that the limited partners only are limited to what they invest in the business. That's what I'm trying to say. So in the partnership, we have the pros and the cons. For the pros, we have they have they, there's a shared responsibility and resources, and also there is a simple agreement between both partners or rather among the partners. We also have the cons for partnership. We have unlimited liability for general partners. It means that in a situation whereby there is bankruptcy, liquidation, the business owners or the partners might lose their personal assets to fund or rather to cover those losses that was generated by the business. We also have potential for conflict among partners, which is very, very common. So you're, you need to accommodate, you need to create a heart, a part of your heart to accommodate dispute among your partners. That's all about partnership. Um, number three is the private limited liability company. Private limited company liability company 
is a company that is separate from its owner. It has a separate legal entity from its owner and is mostly used by businesses that have the potential for growth and also continuation because it's a very, very um, business, it's a business structure that doesn't depend on one particular type of ownership. It means there can be different ownership and the business will still be going on. And you can also raise in, uh, money from um, investors, like getting money from investors and all that so we have the pros and cons of a private limited company for the pros is that limited liability for shareholders it means that the shareholders they don't lose a personal asset in terms of bankruptcy so it's a limited liability they only lose the amount they invest into the business we also have another pros within the private limited company is the ability to raise capital by issuing shares they issue shares and they raise capital for it while there are, we also have perpetual succession which means that the business is um doesn't it doesn't tie to one particular ownership it means even if there's a change of ownership the business has the capacity to keep going on we also have the cons of um private limited liability company and among the cons is more regulatory requirements and compliance obligation it comes with the more regulatory compliance uh, regulatory uh, requirements and compliance ob obligation it also comes with the higher cost of setting up setting up a private limited company comes with the higher cost of um definitely of cost uh, so number four is the public limited liability company which is an upgrade to the uh, private limited liability company the same separate entity the both share the same way of raising capital and um, limited liability also but the only difference is that in the public limited liability company you sh you open your shares or you rather you list your company on the stock exchange we means you, you can set your shares you can sell shares on the stock exchange market and the public have access to your shares unlike the private limited company that's only certain persons have access to your shares so in a public limited company the public has access to your shares um for the pros of public limited liability company is that the ability to raise a large amount of capital by selling shares to the public you have you have the ability to raise a large amount of capital by selling selling shares to the public it also comes with a limited liability for shareholders which i've explained in the private limited company we, are, we also have the cons of public limited company which is highly regulated just like the private limited company and also expensive to set up just like the private limited company so it's just the same thing the only difference is that in the public limited company you are selling your shares to the public and you are opening it or listing it in the stock exchange market whilst in the private limited company you are only selling it you are only selling your shares to a certain individuals it is not open to the public and it is not listed in the stock exchange market all right number five legal structure that you can also register your business with in nigeria is the incorporated trustee also known as the ngo this one comprises of a board of trustee before you can register this business you must have certain individuals who represent a board of trustee for this business and it's mostly used by ngos non-profit organizations um charitable organizations religious uh, organizations educational and also social purposes it, it has its own pros and cons for the pros is that um tax exemption you don't pay tax operating a corporate trustee you don't really pay tax so there's a tax exemption for it and it has a legal recognition for printing as a non-profit activity yeah. so the cons of incorporated trustee is that you cannot distribute the profits to the board of trustee because it is a non-profit organization it means that every profit every profit must be reinvested back into the business it must be reinvested back into the business and must operate only within the scope of a non-profit organization so in any day any time you decide to start operating as a profit organization it means you have to go and re-register your business for a profit organization because if you continue with that act it means you are violating the law that govern the non-profit organization or rather the incorporated trustee um legal structure and which means that you'll be fined heavily by the government um probably if you shut down your business okay so that's all about the whole legal structure or rather the five legal structure that you can register your business with or start up business with in nigeria um so when you're choosing among these five structures you want to make sure that there are some factors that you put in place like ownership control capital your plan your growth for the business so you need to put 
put in all these factors so that you can choose the best legal structure that best suits your startup business and in case you are asking okay what about if i choose um a sole proprietorship for instance and i along the line and i want to change to a private limited company will i still be able to do that yes you still be able to do that you still be able to do that along the way all you just have to do is to go and re-register your business and uh, for a different legal structure of your choice so it is very very much possible to start as a sole proprietorship and register later on maybe when you start seeing growth and you want to expand and you want to bring in uh, more capital into your business by selling shares then you can go and uh, re-register your business for a private limited company public limited company and even partnership depending on what you want to do with your business so that's all about and the legal structure that you can choose from if you want to register your startup business in nigeria my name is siri mezer gusakes like please remember to like share subscribe and also turn up the bell notification for this video and until next time see you